What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you a new package manager by developer Pake E. At least that's how I'm gonna pronounce his name because otherwise my video is gonna get demonetized. So anyway, yeah, this is a new package manager application for your PS4 for installing package files via the remote package installer. It's got some pretty interesting features, so I thought it was worth covering. But there's a few issues with the remote package installer I see people running into quite often, so I wanted to kind of address those as well. So first thing we're going to do on the PS4 here is, of course, run the homebrew enabler payload on 5.05. .05. So run at least version 1.8 or higher in order to uh, use the remote package installer. So this is version 2.1.2. So one of the problems with the remote package installer that people run into constantly is this issue where it looks like you're transferring the file fine, but once you get near the end of the transfer, it goes to 99 plus 99 hours and it never finishes the transfer. It just hangs at the end. So that normally happens because you don't have the DNS servers to block Sony's servers. You basically have to be blocking all connections to Sony's servers in order for the remote package installer to have no kind of issues. Because for some reason, it might be when the PS4 makes a web request or something to Sony's servers and gets a, rep a reply back that that somehow interrupts the remote package installer. So if you block all the connections to Sony's servers, that should eliminate that issue. And one of the easiest ways you can do that is when you set up your internet settings on your PS4, you head to a network and set up your internet settings, choose whatever method you normally use, make sure you select custom, and then we do automatic IP, do not specify DHCP, but we do a manual DNS setup. And then we set our primary DNS to 165.227.83.145. And that is uh, Alizev's DNS server, which blocks all connections to Sony servers, among other features as well, uh, like redirecting the user guide to his exploit page. So you add that DNS address in there, and then you go next, uh, automatic MTU, do not specify proxy, and then you're good. So with those internet settings updated, that will block all connections to Sony servers so that the remote package installer is not gonna get interrupted and you're not gonna get that 99 plus 99 hours problem towards the end of the transfer. Another problem that pops up with the remote package installer is you go to install a game and let's say you accidentally close the program or it gets interrupted and it doesn't install properly. And then whenever you try and install that same package file again, the next time, it just refuses to even start the transfer. And that's normally because the game, the corrupted version is still uh, on your system and you have to delete it from your system first. So in order to do that, you basically head to your notifications and clear the corrupted game from your notifications. And then you'll be able to send that package file again. So those are two key problems uh, with the remote package installer. Another one is you can't have any spaces in the file name, in the package file name, because if you do, then it's not gonna send. And that's just a problem with the remote package installer itself. It's an issue that all um, package sender, package linker apps have because it's a fault with the actual remote package installer homebrew uh, application and not the actual package linkers or package manager apps themselves. It's annoying, but yeah, you just have to make sure you don't have any spaces in your package files name. So yeah, those are kind of like the three main things that um, people run into with issues with the remote package installer. Hopefully that solves some for you. So anyway, if we run the remote package installer here, we can check out this new um, package manager app. So if I head over to my computer, as you can see, this is the website, pake.xyz. And then you basically just download the app right uh, here, Windows version, click it and download it. And as you can see, I've got it downloaded right here. So if I open this up and just create a new folder with the same name, and then we just extract the contents into this folder. Also, if you wanna get the best transfer speeds with the remote package installer, obviously it works on just general Wi-Fi and any other kind of normal home network setup. But if you wanna get the fastest speed, there's a specific way you have to set up your network where you connect an ethernet cable, one end into your computer, the other end into your PS4. Then on your computer, you go to the little network icon on your taskbar, right click and go to open network and internet settings, and then go to change adapter options. And then you're gonna right click on your wireless network connection and click on properties. 
then go to sharing and allow the other network users to connect through this computer's internet connection and then select the ethernet adapter as the adapter you want to share the connection with and that shares the computer's internet connection down the ethernet cable to your ps4 then on the ps4 you just set up your internet connection using a lan cable and you're good to go so and then if you go on to command prompt and you type in ipconfig this will basically show you the IP addresses of your different network adapters and you're just going to use the IP address of your Ethernet adapter as the server host. So when we run the application, that is the IP address we're going to use as our host and that will get you the best possible speed because you're going straight from the Ethernet adapter to the PS4. At this point, we're going to go ahead and run the application here. So it's pretty big, but I do have Windows Zoom set to like 150% or something. So uh, normally it shouldn't take up this much space on your screen, but hey, at least you can see it clearly. So anyway, what you're gonna do is enter that IP address, like I said, as the local IP address. And you're also gonna change the port number to 8080, which is what it has to be for the remote package installer. Uh, we're also gonna set the console's IP address. So. In my case, that's 137.85, as long as it hasn't changed. So then you're gonna select your package folder. Okay, so I just picked this folder that has um, all of my kind of Fallout 4 stuff in it. So if I click okay, it adds the game in there. So one issue with this application is that it doesn't load the games when you first select the folder. So you have to close it and reopen it. So if we close it and reopen it here, it now populates everything um, that was in that folder. All the package files get loaded in here. Pretty nice, it tells you the name of the package file, gives you the title ID, name of the actual game itself, or DLC or update, gives you all that information, the size as well, the current version, whether it's a game, a patch, an add-on or a theme, and um, also, you know, the PlayStation version, I guess, whatever that is, I'm not entirely sure. So. As you can see, it's all added in there. Then once you've done that, make sure that you are actually running the remote package installer, of course, on your um, PS4 at this point. And then you can click test to make sure that um, you're able to actually connect and that it's working. You can connect to your PS4. As you can see, we've got the little tick here. If it doesn't connect, one issue can be your firewall, especially if you use the Windows Defender firewall um, right here. You have to go to public network and turn it off because that can quite often interfere with uh, the remote package installer. So just make sure you do that if you are running into any issues. So one of the features it has is that you can scan console packages. So that'll scan all of the package files that you have here and check to see if you have any of them already installed on your system. So if we click scan right there, as you can see, it's detected that Fallout 4 is installed. And as you can see, it detects that the patch is um, installed when it's actually not. So a bit of a bug there. Hopefully that will be fixed in a newer version. So yeah, so as you can see, it detects that it's installed. If I want to uninstall the game, all I have to do is hit the little X button right here and then wait a few seconds and it goes off to show that it's been uninstalled. So if I switch back to my PS4, you can see Fallout 4 is no longer installed on my system. So that works. And then if I want to reinstall it, I just have to tick this option. It says waiting. And there you go, it starts transferring. So if we head here, you can see it has been added to downloads. So yeah, that's basically it. That's what this tool does. So just to be clear on some of the advantages and disadvantages this has over some of the other package senders. Um, obviously I have a couple of package senders of my own. So. A couple of advantages of this, just the information it gives you about the package files that you have on your computer is pretty useful, giving you the name, um, the title ID, even though, I mean, these title IDs are different. So I guess that might be a bug as well, but um, it gives you some useful information like the title ID and the size of the package files and whether or not it's a game, an add-on or a theme. So that's quite useful. And of course, the other good thing about this is it also gives you information about um, the transfer right here. So it tells you your current um, transfer rate. It also gives you an estimate on how much longer the transfer is gonna take. And it gives you a percentage on how much percentage of the file has been transferred so far. 
So that's useful because obviously a lot of uh, package senders do not give you that information. So you're constantly having to like back out and check the game this way and see how much time's remaining by going on the actual game on the console itself. So the fact that it gives you that information on the computer means that you can just check the application and see how much further the transfer has uh, has gone. So yeah, it's pretty useful in that respect. So it's got a bunch of good advantages there. A couple of disadvantages with this. Obviously, some of the bugs, like the... I don't think it actually allows you to install patch files right now. There's a bug that stops um, patch files from being installed. And of course, it incorrectly detects patches being installed when they're not. So that's a bit of an issue. And then it also randomly crashes if I select a folder that has too much stuff in it. So if I select a folder that has like a crap ton of other files in there and other folders, uh, it just crashes. I'm not entirely sure why, but it does. So um, just make sure that uh, whatever folder you're going to select as your package directory just has package files in it and not many other subfolders and subdirectories because um, otherwise it just randomly crashes apparently. And another bit of a disadvantage is the transfer speeds because this uses an integrated HTTP server, which is good because it gives it the ability to report the progress and all of that stuff. But unfortunately, because of that, it's also not the fastest HTTP server. Uh, Node.js is typically used by package senders because it gives you the fastest uh, transfer speeds. So I timed this game on this package manager and it took about 10, 10 minutes and 8 seconds to install Fallout 4. Uh, this 30 gigabyte game using this package manager whereas using a package sender that uses the node.js http server only took five minutes and 58 seconds so it's significantly slower than other package senders that use the node.js server so if speed is really important to you you really want to be able to install the package files as quickly as possible then this may not be the uh, package sender for you but it has many other advantages, of course. So, you know, different strokes for different folks, I guess. So yeah, that is basically it, guys. That is the package manager by Pick E. Showed you some of the advantages and disadvantages that it has and also how to fix a lot of um, issues that people run into with the remote package installer. So hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I will hopefully see you guys in the next one.